Hi, I'm Mr. V, and today's lesson is from the Illustrative Mathematics, Chapter 6, Verse 14, on coordinate proof. Um, if we go to the Desmos activity, you'll see this is from our curriculum, Illustrative Mathematics. Unit 6 is coordinate geometry, and we're in Lesson 14 on coordinate proof. Before we begin, I'd like to show you some of the homework problems, at least one of them, this one. And... Um, it says select the line parallel to this line. And you may not recognize this, so I'm going to point out to you. We know three forms of the equation of a line. We know the slope-intercept form, which is y is equal to mx plus b. Every seventh grader knows this, because this is what we drill. And I don't know why we don't drill something else, but m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. And um, the way that this is taught within um, int, intercept, that doesn't make sense. Intercept. I can't talk and speak at the same time. This is where the line crosses the y-axis. You're also familiar with the point slope form. So if I have y minus k is equal to m times x minus h. So k, uh, m is still a slope and hk is a point on the line. Um, still further, there's the standard form, which is AX plus BY is equal to C. This is called standard form. And if I were writing a story, um, an equation from a story, this would probably be the easiest one to write it in. But let's look at this. I want to write this in slope-intercept form just to find out what the slope would be. If I subtract AX from both sides of the equation, I get BY is equal to a minus AX plus C. And if I divide both sides by B, I get Y is equal to a negative A over B X plus C over B. Now this is the slope and that's important. So I'm gonna write it here. The slope of this form is the opposite of A divided by B. And um, I'm going to erase this so that it doesn't clutter our view. This first equation that we're given is in the standard form. So our slope of this line, if I take the opposite of the A, that would be a minus 3, because no minus here, but there is in this formula, divided by negative 2. That means that this would be a positive 3 over 2. If my slope is a positive 3 over 2, the line would be parallel. Here we have 3 over 2. This is in the point slope form. This is my slope. This is an answer, correct answer. This is not in that form, but this is in standard form. So I can rewrite the slope here as the opposite of 6 over 4, which is equal to a negative 3 over 2. This is not good because this is negative, but this has to be positive. So this is not going to be on my line. This is the slope of this line, negative 3 over 2, again, not 3 over 2. And here we have 2 over 3 is my slope. <clears throat> it's not 3 over 2. So only have one line that meets the criterion. The objective of today's lesson is to use coordinate figures to prove geometric theorems. And we started off with a which one doesn't belong. Some of the comments that were made on this, which one doesn't belong. A doesn't belong because it doesn't show the axis numbers like this does. This begins at the origin. Here the origin is on here. This is also the only one with all four points on the on the axes. It also makes four congruent isosceles triangles with the axes. This one doesn't belong. Uh, it's the only one that the angles are not all right angles, are not all congruent. This is a rhombus. It's the only rhombus in the book. No, it's not. This is a rhombus and this is a rhombus as well. But this is one where the angles are not the same. The sides are still the same. Also, this one goes in order um, counterclockwise, where all of these others go in order clockwise. And when you name a quadrilateral, it's important to do one or the other. Um, this is a rectangle. These other two are rectangles also. What's different about this one is the sides are not congruent. Here, all of the sides are congruent. This is also the only one with using W, X, Y, and Z, as opposed to... Um, using A, B, C, and D. And this one is different because it is not 
um, its its lines, its sides line up with the grid. These others are not lining up with the grid, even though both of these are squares. So that would be something about that. Our next question, it says here to um, name the quadrilateral. So we're supposed to plot these points. What type of quadrilateral is it? What is the perimeter? What is the area? Explain your work. So I'm going to plot these points. I have 0, 0, 7, 1, 12, 6, and 5, 5. I want to connect these, I get something like this. And if this is a parallelogram, because this is a slope of 5 over 5, and this is 5 over 5, this is 1 divided by 7, and this is 1 divided by 7. So the opposite sides are parallel. It is a parallelogram. The question is, is it a rhombus? To do that, I need to find the side lengths. So I'm going to go a squared plus b squared is c squared. This is 5 and 5. And I do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This is 5 squared plus 5 squared is equal to c squared. Now I have two 5 squares. That's 2 times 25, which is 50, is equal to c squared. And if I square root both sides of this, notice this can come out from under the radical, and the radical is left. And maybe you remember our discussion of half a square, how this is about 1.4 times the side length. That's what, one, that's what the square root of 2 is. So you could write this as approximately 1.4 times 5. It should be about 0. 0.7, something like that, I don't know. Now, <clears throat> this one is 1 and 7. So if I do 1 squared plus 7 squared is equal to c squared, I have 1 plus 49 is equal to c squared, and oh, looky, that's the same thing we had here. We had 50. So we have the square root of 50 is equal to, this is c squared, um, the square root of 50 is equal to our answer, and we know that the square root of 50 is equal to 5 times the square root of 2. So the sides are all for the same. That makes this a rhombus. Now we're asked to find the perimeter, and to find the perimeter, I'm going to add up all the sides. Well, there's four of these, and each side is 5 times the square root of 2, so I would get 20 times the square root of 2. If I do 20 times 1.414, I'm going to equal to 28.28, something like that, for my perimeter. To find the area is a little bit different challenge of a challenge. If I were to make a large rectangle and subtract from it the two green, the two small triangles, and these two medium-sized triangles, I'll draw a visual of what that is. My large figure minus two little rectangles minus two of the small triangles minus two of the large triangles. This may look complex, but it's really not that bad. This small figure here is one times five, or five. This is one half of one times seven, or seven halves. Same with this one. This is one half of five times five. And if I take this large one, which is a 12 by 6, and I subtract from it 2 of the 5 units, and I subtract from that 2 of the 1 half times 7, and I subtract from that 2 of the 1 half times 25, I can simplify this as to 72 minus 10 minus 7 minus 25, which is 30. That's my area. There may be other ways of solving this. I thought that was good enough. Our next activity deals with the Pythagorean theorem, is apparently from the title. A 5 by 5 and a 3 by 3 square can be cut into pieces that fit in to form a third square. What is the area of the 5 by 5? The area of the 3 by 3? The area of the third square when you combine all the pieces. Use the area to find the side length of the third square. Let's do that much of this. So... The 5 by 5 square has an area of 25. A 3 by 3 square has an area of 9. When I add these together, I get 34, which is going to be my area of my third square. Okay? 
And if the area is equal to the side times side, s times s, then my side length would be the square root of 34. Or it's about 6, but I'm going to say the square root of 34. Next, we are to mark point P on segment DC such that PD is 3. 1, 2, 3. It's on the segment, and we'll mark it with a capital block letter. Then we're going to draw segments PA and PF. These two segments make this into two, into several figures, but they divide up this figure. And this figure can be rearranged into one large square, these figures. But first I need to calculate this length. Well, this length is three and this is five. So if I use a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. By the way, do you see anything similar between these two triangles? So we have three squared plus five squared is equal to c squared, or 9 plus 25 is equal to c squared. 34 is equal to c squared. So c is equal to the square root of 34. Hey. Well, also, this is a 3 by 5 right triangle, and this is a 3 by 5 right triangle. The side length here is the square root of 34. This is also the square root of 34. Oh, look. That's the side length of our square. If I were to take... Um, this triangle, and I could either rotate it uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise around point A, and or I could translate it over to here. I'm going to rotate it. That's what my students did today. I think all the students did this rotated. It ends up here. Can you see the square shortage coming? Square coming. Here we have this triangle, and if I were to rotate it. 90 degrees clockwise around point E. Notice you have to have the point you're going to rotate it around, the number of degrees, and the direction. If I were to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, it ends up here. And this is my square. Isn't that interesting? Next, it says on the next page, change the size. Make AD is 8 and DEF is 4. Where do you draw point P this time? How long is the side length? Of the third square this time. So I've done this for us. I've drawn an 8 by 8 and a 4 by 4. And remember what we did last time was we had to take this length had to match up with over here. Since it's 4, and maybe if you had time, I would leave give you plenty of time, maybe the class period, to do this. So this is where it's going to end up at p is equal to 4, not 3. It's not halfway. It's, it's going to be this distance, whatever this distance is. And if I draw my PA and PF this time, it looks like this. And again, I can go one, two, three, four, up to here and down to here. So what is my side length? Well, if I use A squared plus B squared is C squared, I have four squared plus eight squared is equal to C squared. So C is equal to the square root of 80. Now, can we simplify 80? 80 is 16 times 5. When I take the square root of 16, I get 4. When I take the square root of 5, I get... So I can simplify this as to 4 times the square root of 5. The last question was, which is from our unit here, will this work all the time for any two squares? If it does, explain why. If it doesn't, give me a counterexample where it doesn't. So I'm going to try on my whiteboard to go to an extreme. I'm going to go to as far out as I can. The be the biggest I can make this smaller square without going into a reverse situation would be to make it the same size. And if I do this, I translate this piece over here, I would put my P right in the middle. And sure, I can do this if it's a, if it's a maximum. I can, I can make this square. What if I made my smaller square super, super small, like really, really tiny? Well, if I translate this distance here, I could go and I can still make a larger square. So it works if it's a maximum or if it's a minimum. And in fact, it's going to work every time because when I do this translation and I make my larger square, the, well, I can do it here, I think. This square, if it has a side of A, is going to be A squared. And if this is B, that I translate over here, this is B squared. 
This is c squared. This is a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. It works because it is the Pythagorean theorem. And that was done using coordinate geometry. Now let's look at all the things that we've learned from this from this experience. We used we learned that we use capital block letters for naming points. We learned segment addition. Three plus two is five, or two plus three is five. This is five, and this is three. We learned that we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find this, the length of the side. And here we actually simplified the square root of 80. So we learned simplifying square roots. We also learned that we can do a rotation or a translation. So we can use transformations with this. And we learned that of maxima and minima. So if we maximize it, we get this. So we minimize it, we get this. So that we can actually do this in our proof. All of this is tied up into one one problem. It's a problem because you had to think about it. You have to do it. You can't just watch it and see it done and just look at it and know how to do it. You had to actually think about it as you were doing it. And this, the most important thing is this is a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Now, moving on, with similar triangles. Here we have these points that you can plot. And you could also mark point Q on BC so that BC is, BQ is 5. I've done this. I've already done this for us. So here's what you end up with. And the questions are, to find the lengths of the sides, how would you classify this quadrilateral? What are the slopes of the sides? And is are they perpendicular? So I'm going to copy this over to my whiteboard. And we will, we will look at this a little bit closer. So I have a big square, which is 20 by 20. Let's see, I don't think I have this copied over. I would copy it over here. I need to make this smaller so it fits into my screen, my viewer area. And I'll make it even smaller still. I would say this looks like a rectangle. Maybe it is a rectangle. This, this length here, if I use the Pythagorean theorem, I have, I'll write the formula, substitute the values and solve, which was what I expect you to do. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. There's my formula. My substitute my values at 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to C squared. When I solve this, I get C is equal to 13. Both of these opposite sides are 13 in length. When I do it for this one, I have 8 squared plus 15 squared is equal to C squared. And this is, when I square root this, I get C is equal to 17. Both of these sides are 17 in length. Since the opposite sides are congruent, I know this is a parallelogram. It looks like a rectangle, but I need to show that it's a rectangle. Here's a right angle, and in this triangle I have one angle and two angles. Notice this makes 180 degrees. If this, if this were a right angle, I'll put a question mark, if this were a right angle, then I could say that this angle would have to be equal to <clears throat> this one here. Now, let's just plot this one over here. If I go 5 up and I go 12 out, I end up with this line. And notice these don't look parallel to me. This doesn't look like these angles are going to match up. Let's just check our slopes. What is the slope right here? If I do a slope triangle, I have a rise of 8 and a run of a negative 15. So the slope of this line is equal to 8 over negative 15. It doesn't look like it's going to make it into an opposite reciprocal. The slope of this line is it's got a rise of 12 and a run of 5. Notice these are not opposite reciprocals. This is a parallelogram. This is not a rectangle. And we can use that using our knowledge of slope, using our knowledge of similar triangles, and we can also use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the sides with our slope triangle. Um, I gave a teacher demonstration. You can actually plot this. Let's see, what is this? Activity synthesis. Okay. So there's a summary, a lesson summary for the cool down. It says here, here is a figure, and we were supposed to determine, is it a rectangle? We know that it's a, it's a quadrilateral. We know that it's a parallelogram because the opposite sides have the equal slopes. This has a rise of three, a run of four, a rise of three, a run of four. 
It says a rise of five, a run of negative four, a rise of five, a run of negative four. The opposite sides are parallel. Now the slope here for, the, for this line is three over five. The slope for this one is going to be equal to five, is my rise, I'm sorry, five over negative four. These are not opposite reciprocals. For two lines to be perpendicular, their slopes have to be opposite reciprocals or zero and undefined, which would be a flat line and a straight up and down line. That's it. Good luck and success.